Scott, six six out of seven. What if if you had to explain what you attribute this streak to? What what would you say? Um, we got a good team that's been able to play uh, together for an extended period of time. New, I mean, it's we still have a ways to go. Crazy thing is, all we're doing is just playing games, but we need games. We're behind in games. We're not doing a lot of practicing. We're watching film as much as we can. Um, players are responding. They're, they know that we, we, we gave a bunch away early and then what hit us after that. And then we just, we just got the guys together. They're playing hard. Our, starters, our, star, our stars are leading us and, and playing well and bit by bit or some of our inexperienced players are getting a little bit better. And, and it seems like uh, Rolo and, and Neto, the two veterans, savvy veterans, tough veterans are making, um, playing huge minutes when called upon and playing well. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Neto specifically. Did, did, you, did you expect him to be kind of this consistent and heavy of a contributor for you guys coming into the year? Well, I hope, and you know, I've followed him for a while. I, I always, I mean, I follow everybody in the league, but I've always followed uh, point guards and particularly backup point guards. I played that position at a very high level. And so I know, I know when, when I see a good one, I, we have two good backups. Unfortunately, Ish has been out for a while and Neto has stepped up. Uh, that's a good problem to have when they were both healthy. Uh, the good thing about Neto, he can play, he can play the two, he can play the three especially with today's today's game when you have so many smaller twos and threes but he plays uh, he plays with a, a, a toughness that that that's who he is it's not manufactured he, he walks on the court he has to play with that edge uh, and that's what I love about him he, he's uh, he's a little he's a scrappy he's a scrappy dude that just plays hard and he's a good shooter um, and he can make plays and he finishes around the rim Thought he got fouled in that last one, but that would have been a, a huge up four with you know seven, six seconds to go. But he played well throughout the game. Ava. Scott, um, what did you feel like you guys did better from the start tonight? Um we didn't let them go out on a run. It seems like every not every game, I'm exaggerating there, but it seems like a lot of games sometime during that first quarter, they would go on a 10-2, 8-0, 12-4 run sometime. And a lot of times it's in the later, later in the quarter. Uh, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. And I thought in the second quarter, we made some mistakes defensively with some threes and the same thing that happened in the third quarter. I, then I thought we really, thought Neto and, and Rollo gave us uh, huge, huge minutes in that fourth quarter, just making their catches tough and their shots tough. And that's why they ended up with only 22 points. And when you guys talk about um, guys like Howell and, and Mo, who maybe don't show up huge on the stat sheet every night, but they kind of fill in all the little cracks. And, and like you said, bring, bring stuff like toughness and energy. How important has that aspect of their game um, been to, to this kind of stretch you guys are on? Yeah, I mean, Mo, Mo gives us, uh, it just gives us a little bit of a free spirit. He has a, he has a real positive vibe out there. Sometimes it's, Sometimes it goes a little goofy at times, but you know he, he's making taking advantage of the minutes. He came in as a as our third third center that probably wasn't going to play much, if any at all. But with an injury to Thomas Bryant, uh, and then you don't want to you know wear out uh, Rolo. Thought he's given us good minutes, and like I said, we have three. I know um, Alex didn't play a, a lot of minutes, but he gave us another big body for those five minutes in that fourth quarter. Could have been better, but he still competed and he, he contested a shot, gave us an extra possession. Uh, I thought, you know, with Mo, one of the things with um, Jokic, he's a big, strong kid, and I, Mo struggles with that type of player, but he still fought him hard in that first quarter. Thought he did a much better job than this game than the first game we played him. Arnie? He's got, um, you got 18, uh, you forced 18 turnovers and scored 23 points off of those. 
This is against a team that 48 hours earlier committed just one turnover. I'm wondering if you could just speak to the defensive effort that you guys had on, on this team to kind of propel this victory. Well, I, I think we're, we're definitely playing much better defense the last three, you know, 15 games. Um, we're not where we need to be. We still got to keep getting better. We're going to be able to do it in the film sessions. Uh, we're trying to teach as much as we can with our during games as well as some guys. But I think our activity or being aware on the weak side and, and being a participant, you can't have four guys rowing the boat if you're going to have the success defensively. But I think we're getting five guys. And, you know, when we don't have, when we have one guy missing, it's not the same guy. It always seems to be uh, another guy down the line. I thought, I thought tonight we were active. We did a good job not turning the ball over and take uh, until the last few minutes. Uh, but I, I thought that was a big part of the, our win. We only had 11 turnovers. Thank you. Neil. Hey, Scott. It, it looked like Denny had a few lapses defensively. Can you take us through just maybe where are some of the places where he could have improved today? Um, just being aware, you know, I thought he made some mistakes on the switches. Um, just things that a lot of young players have to go through. And this is no different than any, any player. And even like I've said, mentioned a while back, the MVPs don't come in as an MVP. You build, 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 build. And if you have the skill set and the work ethic and the talent, you're going to be that type of player. Denny's just wants to play. Uh, he has to just keep playing hard. He's going to learn how to uh, read the situations quicker. And, and I thought tonight, he overhelped on when Rolo had uh, the ball in the control, gave a right slot uh, three to, to Porter. And then some of our switches with Murray, those are hard plays. These guys are, he's an all-star and he's real clever on his, on his, uh, on his routes. You think that he might be setting a screen for a guard and he slips it and then, he, and then Jokic is such a great passer. If you make one split second mistake, that's going to be a wide open three or a layup. But I think, uh, He's gonna keep. He's gonna keep improving. You know, he's getting good minutes. Um, yeah, he just has to keep, keep, keep at it, and he will. He's a, he's a hardworking, good kid. Uh, Zach Akuma. Hey, coach. Uh, Rui played in a team high thirty-eight minutes today. Uh, but what did you think of the job he did on both ends? I, I, one of his best games. I mean, he's, he's keeps, he seems to keep getting better. I keep saying that I think this is might be the third time I've said this now. This is his best game. This is his best game. This is right there with his best game. Just being aware, running the floor, getting some easy ones, getting knowing where to be in, in the in the places on the floor to get his open shots. I thought he, he took a couple of threes, which is good. Uh, he took four, so that, that's good. I mean, he only made one, but I like him taking them there. He's, he's open and he's going to go four for four some nights, but I don't want him to pass up shots, but uh, defensively, he's active. He's using his length. I thought he made one mis one mistake tonight. Unlucky play. We got the deflection. Uh, I thought he had to steal from Jokic, and then the ball went right back to him, and he he lost the uh, Porter for that late that late dunk down the middle. But other than that, I thought he played pretty solid all all night defensively. But it's getting better every day, every game. That's what I love about Rui. He wants he wants to he wants to improve. He has a desire to get better. Thank you. Thank you. Zach Rosen. Coach, you're a West Coast guy, but do you remember having kind of a trip like this? I know you guys had momentum going into the trip, but just to, to really feel like a turning point on the season. I think the last two trips have been pretty good. You know, we've had a crazy, crazy trip. Last one was a great game, a bad game, great game, bad game on the 2-2 trip. Uh, this one, I thought we started the trip off right. We were solid. We've been solid all along. I thought we ran out of gas against the Clippers. Obviously, their two stars played like MVPs, but we still cut the lead to five going into the fourth quarter. And then man hit those two shots, three in the drive to the right. Um, but I thought this trip was, it was good. I, I, we're getting confident, but I think we're getting confident because we get to play with one another uh, for a long stretch of time now. We just got to you know, knock on wood, we stay healthy and, and COVID free and, and just keep getting better game by game. And we'll finish up with Fred. 
Hey, Scott, uh, I just wanted to follow up on you. You talked about Rui's defense. His, throughout the beginning of his career, his on-ball defense has kind of been ahead of his off-ball stuff. How, where do you think he is, and if you break it down that way, where he is guarding the ball versus where he is off the ball? Do you feel like that gap is closed? Well, I, I think the gap is definitely shrinking. I think he's doing a better job of closing out and understanding that there's a lot of great shooters in this league. And, you know, sometimes it takes you a while. I mean, you, you play a college game and there might be two great shooters on the floor and that's with 10 players. But in this league, there's sometimes, you know, five amazing shooters. Like they had some really good shooters tonight with Jokic being able to take take you out and and shoot the ball. But I think his de off, off the ball defense is much improved. Still needs to get better, still needs to see it, still needs to, to keep keep improving and he will. He does a Corey, Corey Gaines. Works with them always and watches film with them. And but he's he's definitely getting better in that area. But I, I like that because I like Russell says it all the time to him. You you're the only one on this team that can guard one through five. Um, didn't use didn't need to do that tonight, but he he can he can guard one through five. He's that he's that good defensively when he's really really locked in and he's going to get better. I think just as he knows the league, knows the personnel, and you can you know help yourself out by knowing who you're guarding much better. Hey, I will. It seemed like, you know, you were hitting some of your floaters, some of those tougher shots. When you're uh, in that kind of groove as a bench player, does it help you be more aggressive later on uh, in continuing to take those shots? Um, yeah, I think uh, no matter if I'm making it or not, I know that's my shot and the team uh, expect me to take those shots uh, and be aggressive no matter how the game is going. So, um, of course, it's easier when you make the first two or three shots and then of course, you have more confidence going to the to the end of the game, but um, I got to work on my mindset and work on whatever. If I'm on the court at the end of the game, even if I miss all the shots, I got to I gotta take those ones. And that's what the team uh, expects from me, and coach gives me the confidence to do it. So um, no matter how the game is going, I got to take those. Zach. Oh, well, you and Compazzo, I know, are pretty familiar with each other's game. Is it fun going up against them, and does it give you a little bit more of a an edge, you know, just to compete a little, like a tiny bit harder against him? Uh, I don't think I, I walk into the game thinking that way. Of course, I mean, we had some battles um, back playing for Brazil and Argentina. It's always fun playing against the best players, and he's a great player. So, uh yeah, it's always fun, and he's the kind of guy that uh, plays hard, uh, likes to play defense, and got, likes to uh, try to get into your skin and, and think that he has this Argentinian, you know, DNA of playing. So um, it's always fun playing against players like that, but I think I just walk into the game, uh, worry about myself, worry about what can I do to help my teammates, whoever I'm playing against. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, we have history, and, and I think uh, I enjoy playing against the best, and he's one of one of them. Um, so, so yeah, but I don't walk into the game with that mindset. Kellen. Hey, well, the team has been playing a lot better this past six, seven games. I guess what feels the most different, you know, this, these past couple games? Um, I think everybody know uh, what we have to do to help the team. You know, I think uh, at the beginning of the season, we're still trying to figure out what our role was in the team. Um, do I have to take that shot? Do I have to play defense that way? And I think right now everybody know uh, what they got to do out there. Um, we, of course, we depend a lot on Russ and Brad, and they've been great lately. Um, and everybody around them are, I think, doing their job. So I think that's why uh, we playing better. Even the games we, we lost, I think um, we stayed with the positive things we did. and. Um, try to build from playing good, not only from, from wins, even though we, uh, we need them. We need those wins to uh, get where we, where we want. So I think everybody knows their, their role now, and, and that's the key for us. And I think Rui mentioned a couple games ago that Russ asked the role players to define their roles. What, what was your answer? What was your response to that? Um, I mean, that's something like we talk between us, you know, um, I don't think there's a secret. Um, I've been showing my role on the team is to play hard defense, uh, take shots when I'm open, and and that's what I that's what I say was my um, <clears throat> my role on the team. And um, 
but yeah, it was a great conversation. And I think after that, we kind of, when you voice voice that out for the team and, and you hear from everybody else what they, what they, they're, they're, they, what they're supposed to do for the team, I think that uh, makes a huge, huge difference. And it was a great conversation for us. Thanks. Eva. Hey, Howell. Um, Scott, it kind of reminded us earlier tonight that you guys have pretty much just been playing games all month. Like you haven't had that much time to practice or, or even do a lot of film study. What has it been like kind of working through all the kinks, like you said, um, that were happening earlier in the season, just in game night in and night out? I think it's trying to like take every opportunity in games to learn, you know, and to talk to each other, to communicate. Um, I don't think we're going to have a lot of practice going on uh, after seeing the, the the schedule. I think we're going to be traveling a lot and um, playing a lot of games just like the past a couple, couple weeks. Um, so I think we just got to keep keep improving during the game. Um, you know, sometimes we have a couple mistakes and we talk through and, and then we don't do it again. Uh, we miss on a switch and then the next play we talk to each other and hey, we switch you don't miss that again. So I think that's the key for uh, for us to keep growing and keep uh, getting better. Uh, and of course, film that we watch as a team, uh, I think that helps too. And then way back at the beginning of the season, you were the guy that everybody said was the biggest surprise and kind of the, the standout player coming out of training camp. Um, what was that like for you to hear? How much pride or I guess how much confidence did that give you, especially coming in uh, to an orga organization? Um, you know, it's easier when you have teammates and, and coaching staff that allow you to be yourself, you know, and uh, I'm not saying I wasn't able to be myself in other teams, but uh, coach uh, Scott gave me a lot of gave me a lot of uh, confidence and uh, my teammates gave me a lot of confidence to just do what I do, you know, and take shots when I when I feel like I have to take shots, uh, be the leader on the team defensively and talk to everybody. I think uh, uh, I'm in a good spot. I find a team. I found a team that uh, allows me to do that, and I feel comfortable doing it. And I think it's showing up uh, on the court. Um, you know, I worked hard every summer, uh, waiting for my opportunity, and I think uh, it came this year, and and I was ready. That's uh, that's two straight games where you've kind of come in and and kind of held your own against Jokic. I mean, nobody. Nobody stops that guy, but you've kind of you've kind of held him down. What what have you been doing that you feel like you've been able to be relatively successful with in that matchup? I got to give a lot of credit to my teammates. Um, <laughs> they're in and out. They're in and out, um, and uh, they're they're very cognizant of what he's trying to do. You know, um, get in the paint, make plays for his team and for and for his teammates. So I, I really got to give a lot of credit to my guys out there with me. They're helping me out a lot. You're you're a guy who, who tends to hang around the paint more defensively than than on the outside. What what can you do when you're guarding him and he's on the perimeter to help the team defense? Um, it's tough. You know, you gotta try to. He, he's such a great passer, such a great playmaker. You've just got to try to obscure his vision a little bit, make those passes a little more difficult. And then when he's shooting threes, um, you got to get a hand up, contest, but you don't want to. You want to overcommit. You don't want to. You don't want to get into the line because he's great from the line. He's just. He's a great player. Ava. Hey, Robin. Um, how is everybody in the locker room kind of handling this um really good stretch here? What's kind of the emotions like? It doesn't seem like you guys are super overly excited to us, but I don't. know, Maybe you're just hiding it really well. No, no, I don't think we're overly excited. I think uh, we're aware that. You know, we, we've won a few games, but we still have a long way to go. And I think we're doing a great job of taking it one game at a time, not getting too ahead of ourselves. And you've spoken a lot about how much Mo's energy matters on the court. Um, kind of in the same vein, what is Neto able to do for your guys just from the, like, he's really good at scrambling and the hustle plays and kind of all those things? Yeah, he's smart. He's, he's, good, at, um, he's good at making those audibles on defense where he's, he's kind of playing outside of the scheme, but... Um, it behooves us, greatly behooves us. Shy. Robin, um, I know that you in particular have played well in this recent uh, road trip. How do you personally and as a team keep it going 
over your next two games, uh, I think Minnesota and Boston? Um, uh, I was told as a rookie and back in Phoenix that whatever happens, um, however, however a game ends, you enjoy it for that night and then the next day, um, so it's a, it's a fresh start. You, you move on to what's in front of you. So, you know, we'll enjoy it tonight. We'll fly back home tomorrow and get back to work. Russ, you talked about um, consistency last game. What was the key to the better start tonight, do you think, for you guys? Uh, our energy was in the right place. I thought we did a good job of um, just making sure our mind and our bodies were in the right, right place. And uh, we did a good job of that tonight, start the game. And where do you think um, how Neto impacts this team the most? Uh, everywhere, man. Tonight he was everywhere. He was big tonight. <clears throat> Defensive plays, made big shots. Uh, you know, he was X Factor tonight, did a good job of uh, you know, keeping control of the game when he was in there. Uh, did a hell of a job tonight. Fred. Russell, what's what's allowed Robin Lopez to have success for you guys off the bench? Said again. What's allowed Robin Lopez to have success for you guys off the bench? Uh, what has allowed him? Um, I think Robin been in the league a long time. Uh, you know, maybe something you gotta ask him, but um, he's he's a vet. He knows how to play the game. He knows how to read the game. He's very smart, so he he understands. He knows how to play. Zach. Russ, you guys got four more games before this mini break. You know what? What is it going to look like for you guys to keep this going and, and not run out of gas before that break? Um, just play one game at a time. That's all you can do. Um, you know, this is our job. You, you got to make sure you come in, be professional, um, and make sure guys are ready to go. And, um, that's all we can do. Kellen? Hey, Russ. Uh, one of the themes that have, have come up throughout the season is your, your leadership. You, you've mentioned it. Uh, Coach Brooks has, has mentioned it. Brad has mentioned it. How would you describe your leadership and what do you enjoy about that role that you play? Um, I think leadership is, is not just talking or what people see. A lot of time, there's a lot of people that get labeled as leaders because of what y'all see or what they allow you guys to see. To me, that's not real leadership. To me, it's, leadership is when things are going bad, going good, you stay the same. Uh, you find ways to connect with your teammates, connect with uh, them on a different level uh, to allow them uh, you know, to... To, to let them lead you. Um, and to me, that's, that's what I, I try to do every, every season is make sure that um, I, be, I become a, a good leader for, for my guys and they can lean on me uh, for anything they need. How has your leadership style, if it has evolved over time? Um, it's been the same. I think it's just now it's really up to y'all in the media to determine if I'm a good leader or not, to be honest. But, um, you know, I've been leading the same way since I've been in the league. Um, I think now, I hear it from other teammates and other teams and shit like that. You that that allows you guys to be able to like, oh, Russia leading now, which is I don't, you know, it doesn't mean nothing to me because I know that leadership is something that I've always been able to do I'm on, on every team that I've been on, and uh, I'm gonna continue to do that. Arnie, hey Russ, can you take us through that last sequence when when you saw them uh, on a four to four to one break? Did you expect uh, Jamal? To, to pull up and, and take that shot? Um, you got to ask them. I don't know. What's going through your mind when you're the one on the three-on-one fast break at the end of that game? First praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, my initial thought was they're about, they about to get a damn layup, uh, and we're going into overtime. That was honestly my initial thought. Is I was running towards Murray, and I just knew he was going to throw a lob to Porter Jr. Uh, you know, for an easy lay or a dunk. Uh, then I seen him kind of slow down to the three-point line, and I'm like, well, shit, he's trying to send us home. So I'm like, well, you know, let me try to at least try to contest and force him to, you know, take the layup. And sure enough, you know, they kind of played into our hands in our favor. So, you know, we're – I'm happy as hell, I can tell you that. Do you, do, you, do you feel like – do you feel like like when you're on a roll, like is, is it almost like basketball karma, like things start to go right for you in those situations? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you know, sometimes uh, there's a little luck involved, <clears throat> you know, things fall your way. Uh, but, you know, we, I think we still did enough to win tonight, you know, granted it came down to that play. 
uh, I think we still did a good job and did enough to win. Ava. Brad, um, for this really good stretch you guys are on to be happening in this month where you had so many games on a, on a tough road trip against really, really mighty teams, what extra meaning does that bring to it, I guess, the fact that you guys are soaring right now? Uh, nothing, honestly. I mean, we, we still haven't done a damn thing, Ava. We still, you know, we've won a few games, but we, you know, we, we still have some bad habits we got to correct. And, you know, we still, you know, we still got a whole big season ahead of us, you know, with a lot of games and a lot of room to make up. So, uh, you know, we still have this humble approach and mentality that we still got, we got to put our hard hats on and still get back to work. And how much did you know about Howell before he became your teammate? I knew him briefly from playing, you know, we when he was in Utah and in Philly a little bit, you know, he uh, he was always a like a crafty guy, a crafty second point guard. Uh, I don't think he had a lot of freedom as he did as he does here. Uh, and I would say ever since camp, you know, I was always a fan of him, you know, with his ability to be able to shoot the ball. Uh, and then just his his tough tough grit mentality that he has, you know, I think that's the Brazilian side of him. You know, he just, uh, he's just a gritty guy. You know, we, we love everything he brings to the table. He accepted the challenge tonight guard Murray. Murray made some tough ones, but he made them work for every single thing. Thanks, Brad. Zach. Brad, how were you guys able to kind of bond a little bit off the court, maybe on this trip? Like, I feel like uh, you experience these moments and these wins, but it's like, man, I haven't seen you all trip. So, like, what are you guys doing to kind of keep that mojo together? Uh, honestly, Zach, we see each other every damn day, uh, whether it's through testing, whether it's eating. You know, we have moments and opportunities to be able to bond. I mean, granted, we're on a state-to-state -state basis on, you know, whether or not we can gather with large groups of guys, but, you know, we, I mean, we're a young team. So a lot of, know a lot of guys game, you know, a lot of guys play FIFA and uh, you can hear guys yelling and, you know, yelling in their rooms com competitively. So, you know, that's, that's always cool and fun to hear and, uh, you know, to be around. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're a team that's young. Everybody, you know, loves each other. Everybody has a great character and granted, you know, it's not like any other year where we're able to just go out and hang, uh, go get some food or whatever, but, you know, we, we make the best of what we got. Neil. Hey, Brad. In, in past years, you've talked about, you know, wanting to become a better free throw shooter. Last year, you had a career high 84%. So far this year, you're at 89.5%. Is there anything you can attribute that to? Uh, just my mentality. Uh, you know, my goal is coming into this year is to be 90. I tell myself every time I step up to the line 90, I just say 90 to myself. And, Granted, I'm, I'm shooting it with confidence and stepping up and just knocking them down at three points. Samir. Hey, Brad. Um, so during this winning stre stretch that you um, guys are currently going through, you guys are ranked in the better half of um, defensive um, rating in the league. Um, you know, prior to that, um, you guys have um, – had your struggles on that end. Um, what's been kind of going through the entire process on kind of correcting those, um, you know, issues on that end and how have you been able to turn it around for these last couple of weeks? Uh, we watch a lot of film. Um, you know, we, we take pride in realizing that we were, you know, one, if not the last team in defense, you know, one of the last teams in defense early on in the year. And, you know, that was, that was horrible. You know, we, we knew we were better than that. And, uh, you know, honestly, over just the last few games, it's just been our consistency uh, to our approach on the defensive end. You know, we're locked into guys, we're locked into personnel, uh, we're locked into our game plan and how we want to guard guys. Uh, I would say earlier in the year, it wasn't like that. You know, we were kind of all over the place. Uh, granted, you know, it was, it was kind of like we were learning things on the fly. You know, we didn't have all of our guys there uh, whatever the case may be, but now, you know, there's, we kind of have this no excuse, uh, you know, attitude, you know, everybody knows what their job is. Everybody knows, you know, when they come into the game, you know, they're supposed to defend and play hard, you know, and let every, let the rest of the game take care of itself, you know, let the chips fall where they may. So 
Uh, I think we've just been trusting each other, trusting ourselves, and trusting each other on defense more than anything. And uh, I think it's just the consistency, you know, just accepting that challenge and knowing that, you know, in order for us to win games, we have to defend. Just a quick follow up. Um, who's been big on that end in terms of uh, how you've been able to kind of turn this thing around in terms of defense? Everybody's not a one man show. You know, we all we all play a part in, in getting these wins. We all play a part in guarding guys. You know, no one man had just Jamal tonight. You know, Russ guarded him early on and he was struggling, you know. And uh, so, you know, everybody, everybody has their opportunities to guard guys, you know. Um, it's not like one person is going out there and shutting down everybody. You know, we have to defend and depend on everybody uh, to be able to, you know, carry their weight and lift up their teammates. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. All right, last question to Fred. Brad, Brad Russell has talked a lot throughout the year about how as he's gotten healthier, he's been able to get to the rim more. So what does his ability now to get to the rim do for you when he's playing off the ball, like when you're running those strong side pick and rolls and he's there for catch and goes and that kind of stuff. How does that help you? Oh, I mean, it keeps the defense, you know, it makes them respect everybody on the floor, you know, uh, because a lot of people like to let Russ shoot. And granted, Russ will shoot or he will catch an attack, you know, so you have to be prepared for, you know, either one of whatever's going to come come our way. Uh, but he does a he just does a great job of staying in attack mode. We're better when he does that. Um, you know, just being able to put pressure on the rim, get into the basket, you know, letting our bigs be able to follow up for offensive tip backs if that's the case. Um, so, it's, I mean, we just need him always in that mode. I mean, he, he never stops. Uh, he's always, you know, pushing the pace, looking to attack, looking to get guys involved, looking to make a play. You know, and that's always what we need. You know, he's he's a true leader, you know, and uh, he, he lives by that and he, he embraces that.